Neighbourhoods completely emptied of their residents. Only three years ago, Jalala in northern Iraq was a town with 80,000 inhabitants. In the hands of Islamic State until 2014, Kurdish forces have since recaptured the town. At the end of 2015, some of the town's inhabitants began to return. But it's hard to resume normal life when the scars of war are still so present. In the market of Jalala, the fragrant aroma of spices is all but a distant memory. We came back recently and found all these shops were burned. We managed to rebuild everything and open up again, but a lot of people are still absent. God willing, the situation will get better. The escalating violence has forced millions of Iraqis to flee. Over three million people are now displaced. Forced to flee, leaving behind a home, land and friends. Which is exactly what 64-year-old farmer and father of ten children, Hamed, did. He had no other choice when Islamic State occupied his hometown, Ramadi. Everybody fled, by car or on foot. My car had broken down, so I called my son-in-law. He came to pick up the family, but I stayed at home. The next day, I was hit and injured by a mortar missile and I was taken to the hospital and had surgery. In October 2014, Hamed's son was killed by a sniper. His death severely traumatized his second son, who now regularly has epileptic fits. His daughter lost her child and husband in an airstrike that killed nine members of her family. I've lost all hope. Since my daughter and husband died, everything's gone. Hamed has an appointment at the MSF Mobile Clinic today. The conflict continues to intensify in Iraq, greatly complicating the work of aid organizations. MSF teams continue to respond to the humanitarian needs of displaced people. Health structures, health facilities have been partially and totally damaged, reducing in dramatically the access that people can have to care. Definitely we cannot leave the Iraqis alone. Traumatized by the violence he has witnessed, Hamed has just one dream, to go home with his family to Ramadi, even if the region is devastated. 40 to 60 percent of the town is said to be destroyed. Trapped in an area barely 25 kilometers square. On one side, five kilometers away, the Islamic State front line. And on the other, the district of Afrin that is held by Kurdish forces. And the Turkish border that is being closed for over a year. Only a very small number of medical and aid workers are allowed to cross. These Syrians have absolutely nowhere they can go. Today, the people of Assas can only count on them, can only count on Turkey. And therefore, we ask uh, the Turkish government to open the borders for them. We have seen markets and hospitals bomb. Our own staff, uh, many of them, they have become uh, displaced persons themselves, uh, joining other tens of thousands of people fleeing and uh, settling in uh, overcrowded uh, ITV camps or in areas where they don't have access to the basic services. People wait in seemingly endless queues. MSF teams are vaccinating people against yellow fever in this port town. Our target population is from nine months to the adults, so it's quite a lot. Uh, we have 69, people, 69 teams on the ground and every team is vaccinating more or less a thousand people per day. Vaccination, but also vector control, using chemicals to destroy breeding sites and kill adult mosquitoes that carry the disease. On va fumiguer 
We're going to fumigate insecticide to kill adult mosquitoes and we'll use a lava site to destroy the larvae where there's stagnant water. We'll also be spraying inside houses, schools and hospitals. Yellow fever is an acute viral hemorrhagic disease. There is no specific treatment. Prevention through vaccination and vector control are still the best ways to combat the disease. Yellow fever is a viral hemorrhagic disease, like dengue fever and Ebola. It's caused by a virus transmitted by the Aedes mosquito, but only infected females can actually transmit the disease. It bites mostly during the day. Yellow fever occurs in tropical regions of the Americas and Africa. In around 80% of cases, the infection causes no or very mild symptoms, similar to those of the common flu or malaria. They usually disappear within a few days. In around 20% of cases, the disease is far more severe and other symptoms develop. Jaundice, hence the name yellow fever, kidney disorders, bleeding, convulsions and even coma. Between 25 and 50% of severely affected patients die. According to the World Health Organization, an estimated 30 to 60,000 people die of yellow fever every year. It's a difficult disease to diagnose, as the symptoms alone are not enough. A blood sample has to be taken and sent for testing at a specialist laboratory. Although the disease was discovered 90 years ago, there is still no treatment for the actual virus. Patients can only be helped to overcome the disease by treating the symptoms. So prevention is crucial. To reduce the risk of mosquito bites, effective personal protection is key. Vector control to combat the mosquitoes is also important. This includes getting rid of stagnant water, as this is where they lay their eggs, and spraying and fumigating insecticides to eradicate breeding sites and eliminate adult mosquitoes. Another means of prevention is vaccination. A vaccine was found long ago, affordable, Effective in almost 100% of cases, just one month after injecting a single dose, it provides lifelong protection. It's a tricky vaccine to produce. The virus is first injected into a fertilized chicken egg. The egg is then kept in an incubator for around three days, the time it takes for the virus to multiply. Then, the white of the egg, which at this point contains millions of vaccine viruses, is extracted from the egg, the virus is separated and rendered non-toxic. 100 to 300 doses of vaccine can be obtained from just one egg. A complex and relatively long process. And as demand for the vaccine is highly fluctuating, manufacturers do not produce very large quantities. This limited supply is problematic, as the vaccination of millions of people in Angola and Congo is putting considerable pressure on the global stockpile. A possible solution would be to reduce the size of the dose. A preliminary study on one of the vaccines showed that one-fifth of one dose still provides sufficient protection. But further studies are required to confirm that this method is truly effective. Je suis arrivé le, le dernier jour du déménagement entre l'ancien camp de Grande Sainte qui était une jungle boueuse, euh, insalubre. Et j'ai été touché de voir euh, quelques jours après donc, euh, tous les bénéficiaires qui venaient d'investir leur, euh, leur cabane euh, sur le nouveau camp euh, venir spontanément et dire « Ah, oh, my friend, it's a good place, it's dry, no trouble now, no more mud ». Ça, c'était très, très, très émouvant et de voir que ces gens, bah, tout d'un coup, ils retrouvaient une dignité. Et euh, oui, ça, c'est quelque chose qui touche, qui touche. Mais c'est tellement fragile. 
Peut-être que ce camp, dans 15 jours, on n'en parlera plus. C'est ça qui est frustrant aussi. Je suis un Français, Gascon, euh, avec des idées politiques, avec euh, une action sur euh, la politique locale. Et euh, de voir que nous, Médecins Sans Frontières, on est obligé d'intervenir sur la France, alors qu'on est un pays développé, qu'on a été capable dans les années 70, en 1979, d'accueillir 120 000 bot people sous une droite conservatrice. Et de voir qu'aujourd'hui, un gouvernement de gauche n'est pas capable de gérer le destin de quelques milliers de migrants, ça me met hors de moi, parce que c'est parce que facile à faire, si c'est fait intelligemment, si on est pétri d'humanisme. Et euh, moi, il y a une phrase qui me vient de Jaurès, qui dit « Le pouvoir se mesure à l'audace ». Nous, on a eu l'audace, le maire de Grande Sainte a eu l'audace de lancer ce camp. On a eu l'audace d'investir là-dedans et de se lancer dans l'aventure. Mais où est l'audace de l'État Qu'est-ce qu'ils font Qu'est-ce qu'ils font